is special forces and Israeli special forces, they took out heavy casualties in failed offensive against Hamas, retired U.S. Army Colonel, he reports. I want you to take a look at this report first. Three of those fighters have been killed and three Israeli soldiers, adding to the already large number of Israeli soldiers who were killed during Hamas's massive assault on wow. southern Israel, including 27-year-old Israeli-American combat soldier Arya Ziring, who was at his parents' house when he got the call to fight. It'd be the last time they'd see him alive. Down the road from his childhood home. This is uh, absolutely devastating. There is no doubt about that because this report came two weeks ago. It was very early, very, very early in the war when they, Israeli and American forces, took heavy casualties. Can you imagine now that the war has blown to this proportion the way it did? Can you imagine now how many of them are taking casualties and how many people, how many soldiers, American and Israeli soldiers are actually losing their lives? Can you imagine? So this is going to be a huge, huge disaster for these uh, Zionist special forces uh, who are being heavily backed up by the Israeli, sorry, the American forces. Let's take a listen at uh, Colonel McGregor, what he has to say, because uh, this is very, very interesting. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Glenn Deason. I'm a professor of political science. So I'm just going to fast forward. 71,000 Ukrainian soldiers killed. Uh, that may be accurate. Uh, to be frank with you, the Russians have been far more honest about losses, theirs and Ukrainian, than we have. Uh, Americans wow. won't like to hear that, but our government simply hasn't been very honest about the whole thing. Wow. So I think the uh, Ukrainian ground war, for all intents and purposes, mm. is either at a standstill yep. or perhaps even over. Wow. Uh, they're desperate for manpower, and they're trying to force people into uniform inside the country that are not really capable of fighting. And as you know, they're trying to repatriate Ukrainians from overseas of military age. Uh, this is, again, going to be a huge, huge problem for the uh, U.S. and Israeli forces because uh, they never, ever expected this kind of counteroffensive by Hamas. Let's take a look at this article. This is what I want to share with you. So Military Watch, this is an article from uh, Military Watch, and they man, ma made mention of these casualties. American and Israeli forces took heavy, quote-unquote, heavy casualties in failed offensive. Now, why they will fail? I explained this to you guys using Colonel, uh, Colonel McGregor's uh, logic, and that is that there is nothing where U.S. or Israeli forces can hide inside Gaza because everything is just being destroyed. You are standing in an open field because of the destruction. Therefore, you will be visible by Hamas, by these snipers, whoever are positioned for this killing. Therefore, they are going to be taking heavy casualties and entering into Gaza, wallahi, is going to be much, much more difficult in the coming days, coming hours even. Let's take a look at this report a little bit more. The United States has reportedly deployed special operations forces for joint offensives with the Israeli Defense Forces against the Gaza-based Palestinian militia Hamas. We spoke about this in the past, and I explained to you guys that U.S. said to Israel, uh, Anthony Blinken, and even Joe Biden, when, he, when, they, when they visited Israel, they said, we know you guys, Israelis, can fight. You guys can fight on your own, but we will still back you up. Can you imagine the level of loyalty they have? It is mind-boggling, isn't it? So it is not surprise to us that U.S. military forces or special operation forces entered Gaza with Israeli forces. Nothing is surprising. Conan Douglas McGregor, speaking to talk show host Tucker Carlson, reported on October 25th regarding to this effect. Quote, in the last 24 hours, listen to this, in the last 24 hours or so, some of our special for ops forces and Israeli special ops forces went into Gaza to reconnoiter to plan for where they might want to go to free hostages. We know Hamas took hostages and they are holding them as captives. U.S. wants to free those hostages and the Israelis too, of course. They went in. They thought it will be just like Osama bin Laden, when you go in, you go out, 
you know you take the target out and then you leave they thought this is going to be so easy but little they knew <laughs> that this is not Osama bin Laden it is something far more dangerous far more real Osama bin Laden was a fictitious character like they made it up right this whole thing is so fake we never and I mean Muslims will never do this kind of thing 9-11 what happened Osama bin Laden can never ever be able to do it because can you imagine one person blowing up twin towers two of them unbelievable these are all fake news to blame Muslims to invade Iraq Afghanistan and Muslim land these were pretexts guys pretexts so they thought this time well same thing we are gonna go in get the hostages out and voila everything will be done then we can just nuke Gaza literally they want to nuke right because they want everybody out they want to be that part of Palestine completely destroyed but uh, what happened you know they plan Allah plans right and Allah is the best of planners to plan for where they might want to go and free hostages and make an impact and they were shot to pieces like this is where it gets very very dangerous for the US forces and Israeli forces they were shot to pieces means the body of the soldiers were blown up and took heavy losses as I understand it while the United States and Israeli have coordinated multiple operations closely in the past the presence of American citizens among hostages taken by Hamas in mid-October makes the deployment of American combat units far more implausible the report follows a massive escalation of the American military presence around Israel and deployment of personnel on the ground for advisory roles with the United States having a long history now listen to this of deploying personnel under the guise of providing advisors who go on uh, the uh, participate heavily who go on the particip uh, participate heavily in combat operations the early years of the Vietnam War remain the best known precedent we all know US goes there uh, pretending that they are the uh, liberator right and then they are they become the occupier how they occupied uh, or they try to uh, you know um, occupy Afghanistan if they could because they know there are a lot of minerals a lot of natural resources in Afghanistan if they could they would have occupied the entire country for a very long time but this is their strategy throughout history that they will tell you something but uh, you know they have a different motive but I don't see that happening I don't think most of the governments in Europe are willing to expend the, the manpower to go out and forcibly arrest and then deport uh, young Ukrainian men. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I just don't think that's going to happen. So I think we're in a new phase. And a friend uh, contacted me today and he, he said to me, I think we're now entering Biden's phase of the war. And yeah. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, having run out of ground forces to throw at the enemy, the only thing the Ukrainians can do now is acquire long range strike weapons like the Storm Shadow or the Taurus missile and then hurl those at the uh, Russians. That definitely brings um, this new kind of approach to the whole war. And that is that if US and the Western allies, they're supporting Ukraine by supplying them weapons, can it be possible Russia would do exactly that to Hamas, supply them with weapon, Iran supplying them with weapon and argue with the US, if you support Ukraine, why don't we support? What's wrong with that if we support Hamas? What is the problem with that? Can that be used as a argument, as a, as a logic um, from Iran's and Russia's part? Well, this is why you should never ever take a side. You should always be neutral. You should always watch your steps. US did not. They made big mistakes, big calculations with Russia. Now they're taking side of Ukraine and becoming a open hypocrite to the whole world because everybody now knows that US has two faces when it comes to Israel there's is one face when it comes to Russia Ukraine they have another face and therefore their hypocrisy is being exposed because of those missteps those miscalculations on their part about the whole thing and therefore they are not the worlds judge anymore the way they used to judge between countries hey, you need to do this you need to do that you have to have democracy you have to have human rights they cannot do this anymore because they are being exposed and th this is the result of a very very for a very very long time making all those bad foreign policy decisions on us's part 
And I think that's what we recently saw. We had a big strike.